Hello everybody, it's Emily Killings from Emily Loves London. I hope you're having a wonderful evening. I am here with my Baileys, so it can only mean one thing. It's time for Baileys and chill. Cheers. <coughs> so, this is the, hmm, sort of weekly <laughs> chat I do where I talk about three films, three TV shows and three books I am absolutely loving at the moment. I'm going to start off with the books. The first one is called Mona and it's by Paula Alexarek and this book is about Mona who is an author nominated for the Basque Vods Prize um, which is a prestigious literary prize she is sent to Sweden with the rest of the nominees um, for lectures and a retreat um, and find out who wins the prize and also it's a juicy 200,000 euro money. However, everything is not quite right when they get to the retreat and it is a brilliant novel that can you completely immerse yourself in from the start. The writing flows beautifully as the main character just um, kind of explodes her musings on life and the people around her. Um, and she's completely unapologetic and so, so sassy and I love it. Um, so that is called Mona, so do check that one out. Um, the second book I am going to be talking about is something I was very lucky enough to get a proof of, thank you to Tyson Books. Um, it is called Gallant and it is by Yui Schwab. This book is about Olivia who lives in an orphanage and one day the head of the orphanage receives a letter that's addressed to Olivia from one of her family members to say um, we'd like you to come and live in Gallant which is their stately home so she heads off to Gallant um, but when she gets there not all of her relatives are as happy to see her as you would hope <laughs> it is definitely a haunting read that certainly keeps you on your toes and has you wondering what is around the corner. Um, Olivia is a very sweet character that has a lot to unpack of her past, uh, which is related to her mother's death, um, which is very suspicious. So there's a lot to kind of wrap your head around and a great like mystery where you want to pull out all the information. So yes, that is Gallant. The third and final book that I am going to talk about is The Year of the Reaper which is by uh, Matthew Lucia. This book is about Cass, who is a lord with a turbulent past and an even turbulent future, as stated by the blurb, if you give it a read. Uh, this is a complex, this book has a complex start with a lot of backstory to wrap your head around, but once you understand it all, and I wrote some notes after that first chapter, it's like, right, okay, so that's there, that's there. Um, <laughs> Once that all makes sense, it becomes extremely thrilling and the beginning is quite a reflective um, part because uh, at the heart of the story is a terrible plague that has taken uh, many of the uh, lives of the villagers around the different villages. Uh, I'm not as far in as I'd like to be, but what I have read so far is absolutely fantastic and I can't wait to uncover more of this fabulous book that is called Year of the Reaper and you can find all these books at your local bookstores. Next let's talk films. Um, so the first film I want to talk about is something I posted on my very mysteriously on my Instagram um, a few weeks ago because I couldn't talk about it and now I can talk about it so <laughs> I'm very excited to talk about it. Um, <laughs> I went, I was lucky enough, uh, thanks to a very, very good friend of mine, um, to go to the press screening of the Batman, um, the Batman. I love that it has the the, I don't know why, but it just makes it so much grander and, like, statement-y. <laughs> um, so, this Batman film follows Batman in his younger years, trying to find his identity as Batman and what he means to the city. Um, while Riddler is all about uncovering the city's secrets in a very destructive way, but can Batman and Catwoman solve the puzzle in time before it all goes BOOM? <laughs> this 
is a beautifully crafted slow burn detective story that encompasses a younger Batman unsure of his identity but slowly figuring it out as he finds out many things about his own past and about the past of the city. While his co-stars like Catwoman and Penguin have complex and developed backstories that add so much to the um, overarching plot. A great addition to the character of Batman by Robert Pattinson and I can't wait to see what he does next. Also we have got um, a Penguin TV series which has just been announced by HBO. Thank you HBO. <laughs> and you can go and see Batman in all good cinemas around the UK. The next film I'm going to talk about is for anyone who is subscribed over at Apple TV Plus. Um, I, I don't think you can rent it yet at all. Um, so you'll have to be a subscriber to see this one. It is called The Sky Is Everywhere. It's based on a novel. Um, and this is a beautifully crafted film that centred around music and grief. It's about a young woman called Lenny who sister Bailey has died and Lenny is struggling to find her voice in the world after her sister's death and her path back to her clarinet. However, when Joe comes to town, everything will change, but it is a rocky path to the future. Um, this is a stunning film in terms of the music that has been chosen and the use of interpretive dance within the film, especially in this one scene with Lenny and Joe when they're in the Rose Garden. Oh. Um, just really the simple message of the plot that life is messy and it's not always a straight path, but it's alright, it's cool. No worries, as long as you're happy, life is good. <laughs> um, it is a film that I really loved because it brought um, being in an orchestra as like a cool thing instead of like, oh, she's in an orchestra and then we don't talk to her. Actually, it's cool to be in an orchestra because you're multi-talented, mate. <laughs> Um, so yes, I love that part of it. Uh, I loved the story um, and the characters, especially the grandma who is such a warm and loving presence throughout the film. Um, so that is The Sky Is Everywhere and you can watch it over on Apple TV+. Plus. The last film I'm going to talk about is called Being the Ricardos um, and this is over on Amazon Prime. This is a film about two people that created and nurtured the beloved show I Love Lucy and they are dead. Lucy and Desi Arnaz. Um, it specifically focuses on the time when Lucy was accused of being a communist um, even though she was cleared by a committee only a few weeks beforehand. Um, it also gives you an insight to how um, they got to that point in their careers where they could actually make the show I Love Lucy and the struggle that um, happened before then. Um, Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem are wonderful in this film and the chemistry between them is electric. The plot is great. Um, I love the representation of the shitty way <laughs> that Hollywood treats uh, <laughs> um, generally people but specifically women and people from different countries. <laughs> um, it is a hard and important watch that is at the same time a story of love and never wanting to be apart from each other so yes you should definitely check that out i think this has got an oscar nomination as well and that is being the ricardos and it's over on amazon prime last but not least we have tv shows um i am continuing some series and i am starting new ones so the first one i'm going to talk about is a series i'm continuing to watch as the new season has come out and this is warrior um it's over on sky or now and it's on its second season this is a tv show based on bruce lee's writing about a young man who comes to san francisco to work um and uh, he is trying to stay out of the gang warfare, but evidently there is a connection, um, a personal connection there, and that pool cannot be ignored, and he gets roped into everything, and it's a question now, oh, uh, 
at least at the end of the first season, which side he chooses. Um, this TV show has incredible fight and explosion scenes in it, but at the same time is a political game of chess that even after the first season you're not quite sure who's on top um, in terms of the like the hierarchy. There is complex relationships with both family and romance that make it such an exciting watch so definitely go check this out this is warrior and it's over on sky um and you've got two seasons to watch so come on guys <laughs> this second tv show i'm gonna uh talk to you about is called scream um and i have just finished season one and it is over on netflix um so this is not related to the scream films um this is separate from there um but i was a huge fan of the screen films so i was interested to see what they would do and how they would kind of develop that format into a tv show so i was a bit skeptical but this web of deceit and lies hooked me in so quickly as the story um of who's behind the mask is linked to an event in history where a boy or so they thing still not confirmed uh went and killed a lot of people behind a mask uh because of some bullies but that is not quite the whole story right there um and the main character emma is very much a final girl trope but she uses that to um always be the victim which makes you kind of suspicious of her but the true gem character in this story is audrey and you will find this out when you watch it it is gory but well worth the watch and i'm now into season two and it's still really good and it's still connected to the original story unbelievably um, so yes go check that out that is scream and it's over on netflix and i think there's about three seasons i'm on season two last but not least i went to talk, to talk about the fabulous and incredible Peaky Blinders. Uh, I'm doing a rewatch at the moment and this is over on BBC iPlayer. Um, I don't know where you would find it in the States. I feel like I should say where you would find it in the States. I'm not sure. Um, I guess on BBC America. Um, but yes, this is Peaky Blinders. If you don't know Peaky Blinders, um, it is finishing with its last season this year and I really want you to rewatch it because it's just brilliant it's really fantastic um this is basically about the shelby family who are a gang in birmingham just after world war one with killian murphy at the helm and sam neill striding in about to disrupt his smooth operations due to a certain shipment that went missing of some suspicious items um, this show is for me the English version of Broadwalk Empire with its style and deception that makes it sexy and dangerous and there is a lot of history and politics mixed in that adds to that excitement. So yeah, definitely check this out. This is Peaky Blinders and for the UK it's over on BBC iPlayer. That is everything I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed this Baileys and chill. Cheers, and I will see you soon for another chill night.